Let me turn you on real quick. Oh, oh. Okay, there you go. We are recording. All right, guys, welcome back to my show, Between Two Fenders. I have a really special guest with me today. His name is David Henriksen from Sweden, now living in Nashville. That's correct. Thank you. Is is that the the main one? That's the you don't have to look at any camera. No. A lot of my viewers might not know uh, who you are, but we met a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, you're a working guitar player here in Nashville. That's and you're, true as well. <laughs> and you're original. I know everything about yeah. you. Yeah. Oh my God. I did my research. And yeah. you're originally from Stockholm, Sweden. That's also true. Like, which is very interesting. Um, and I kind of wanted to pick your brain today about what it's like coming from, you know, another country to the States and working as a professional musician and and your background and everything. So how did you get into playing music? Is guitar your first instrument or? It wasn't really. I, uh, I grew up in a musical family. Uh, my mother was a music teacher and played a bunch of different instruments right and my dad played accordion they both played mostly um traditional swedish folk music oh so what does that sound like um well we can send we can put up some links <laughs> okay. there's some really cool stuff some people kind of like oh i hear some irish in there and okay. obviously that's closer than some other parts of europe right. so uh, and uh, my first instrument was fiddle actually for a couple of years no when way. i was six through eight years old but i didn't like i like the folk music my, that my parents play but i didn't really played that you know i was too young did you ever like, hear any like uh country of bluegrass fiddle when you were playing ba back then i i don't think i ever okay. realized that kind of playing existed all right um so devil went down to georgia wasn't a thing uh, no, no. okay no. quite early on started listening to my dad's like vinyl collection with a bunch of like 70s rock yeah uh, so when i was nine years i realized you know long hair and guitar that's cool yeah uh, and i when i was nine years old i started playing guitar but but that was still for the first few years acoustic nylon string yeah playing sure. mostly melodies barely didn't learn any chords or anything how um, old are you here nine nine okay In third grade i started playing end of sixth grade i was 12 i I got my first electric, mm -hmm. had a teacher for about a year that wasn't really an electric player. So we played like acoustic stuff with a pick, on but on electric. So that oh, was okay. still not really playing electric guitar. But that uh, in the beginning of eighth grade, when I was 14, I got like the guy. Okay. He, he was not like maybe the best teacher. He didn't have any training, but he was a, a rock fr he's from Romania, uh -huh. a former rock singer. Like, super big rock star there in in the 80s he still go back there a couple of times okay. a year and play with his old bands they're still very popular um and he showed me stevie ray stuff he showed me like van halen and gary moore and oh richie blackmore and stuff like that and i was like oh but no ingray yeah we did some okay. stuff, like after a year or two we did some sweeping <laughs> and yeah he really showed me within just a few weeks that like okay this is what i gotta do and he saw that in me as well so he offered me you know instead of having 20 minutes lessons like could you do the last lesson slot of the night uh -huh. we can stay for an hour i'll even give you a ride home so oh, we did that awesome. for a year and i didn't pay him anything extra that's cool so that really you know like skyrocketed my playing yeah in a big way so when you found him were you already interested in certain styles or certain uh guitar players like i need to i want to learn how to play like stevie i need to find a teacher that'll teach me or did you were you just like i'm just learning guitar whatever they teach me i'm learning did you have a little like, bit like that but i got my first it was like greatest hits of steve ray vaughan a few months earlier on my birthday so, uh, you so were i was very much into that at that point so that's kind of what we did mostly right. for about a year or so and um, he was very much into i remember like know your down and up strokes and like keep your hand as in a constant motion like tap your foot in the rhythm okay that's good like and those kind of stuff he was like nope stop you did it wrong like let's do this simple riff again and keep that going yeah that engine you know constantly having just having a good rhythm yeah and uh, clock, yeah. mostly kind of more playing riffs maybe the first year than the soloing stuff okay. and that made me like realize how that solidness is like yeah. very important kind of for so, any kind of playing i guess so how long have you been playing guitar now total 
like starting really learning how to play electric stuff with distortion while yeah. it's a band uh -huh. when I was 14. So that's like 16 years now. Okay. Did you have any interest in becoming a professional musician at that point? Or were you like, this is a great hobby, but you know, it's, my parents want me to do something else. No, the, it was like not hobby level at all. Like I realized very early on that this is something I want to do. And just a year later, it was about to like, I'm going to, apply for some kind of high school mm -hmm. and uh, there was a bunch of music high schools in Stockholm that I really? heard really good stuff about so between 2004 and 2007 I went three years to um, music high school uh, where probably 40 45 percent of the time in school I was either playing guitar or doing That's other so cool for guitar high school. yeah a lot of music theory stuff a lot of like arranging yeah. and composing and you know did you so from there did you go to like uh, university I for, for music? after graduating from high school I went two years to another school that's not really university level uh, or college level um, but I had one of Sweden's best like session players of all time as a yeah. teacher for a year and then another guy that kind of introduced me to country playing for the first time like how to use your fingers and do hybrid picking okay the second year I went there and then I was teaching for a year had like three different teaching jobs at the same time and then I studied three years um, and a specific like electric guitar teacher school, not music teacher, not guitar teacher, electric, electric guitar. guitar teacher. You know, we had four weeks of Alan Holdsworth. Wow. We did. So it's almost like the, the MI of. He went to MI in, in the 80s. Sweet, so yeah. we had a lot of that material. We did eight weeks of only country guitar, probably like 12 weeks of only blues guitar, starting with slide and, and this ending was, uh, with like. Something like you went every day like a, uh, it was three days a week okay uh, and a lot of homework yeah uh, and like overall educational stuff as yeah. well like you know this is how the child's brain is working when they're you know three years old okay. like, just how to know how to deal how with to people and how to teach overall but yeah. specifically for electric guitar and that was quite amazing so you was it a degree that you got or is it more like a well they certificate changed, or they ch i could have gotten a, a bachelor's degree okay but they changed the rules halfway through that education that like now you can't teach at the high schools you can only teach at you know low level stuff oh so you had to go I, to more school to do yes okay. instead of having like three years is enough i would have had to add another like two, two to get the degree i wanted um, Which is to teach high school level. Yes, level. exactly. So I uh, actually ended up getting a little bit pissed off with that <laughs> I, because I would you know. Do. So I saved up some money and went to the states for the first time. Instead. Okay, and great I, segue because I wanted to ask you, what was it about American culture that was like I want to go to the U.S. and play music? Isn't everything bigger and better over here? <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you ask nowadays. Yeah. Like we have a common friend named Victor Broden who is. Uh, very good An guy, amazing very good Swedish bass player, yeah. also a, a premier guitar columnist, and he's got a great podcast. The Low Down Society. Low Down right? Society. I'll put a link down to it. But um, he, you know, he loved uh, Bruce Springsteen and Prince. Yeah. And you know, just a lover of American music. Yeah. Were, was there any American artists that you were like, oh, I, I want to walk down the same road that? This yeah, band or this. I'd player. say for me it was like you know while going to this school and playing a lot of cover band stuff and staying in a super small apartment. I felt like I'm just going the same route here. Like and I, I bought so much gear and like this, this can't <laughs> be. I without even counting the guitars. Yeah. Uh, I had rig for maybe eleven thousand dollars with an amp and pedal board wow um like a touring rig almost like a yeah but like but playing gigs two hundred dollars a night for just a drunken audience yeah and which i've no, been there yeah but and that was great for a while but just like is this is this what the peak of my career yeah like, is this uh, all there is to do yeah, in stockholm is there another level and some of my friends they have way better gigs but they play with like modern pop acts where it's like you know a lot of backing tracks not a lot of really guitar playing yeah i just like in the country and blues and rock stuff over in the states there's still like a scene for sure. this so i saved up money sold a bunch of gear you know ended up with a budget that i could actually be in the states for 11 weeks which uh -huh. is longer than most people would come here for the first time i guess yeah uh, and i did a road trip with a friend um new orleans like austin memphis dallas and and finally nashville and my plan yeah. was to be here for maybe 
two weeks and then move on somewhere else, go to LA and Chicago. But oh, okay. I ended up being here for seven weeks Yeah, out of those 11 weeks because I loved it so much. Wow, that's um, amazing. So you didn't even, like you kind of had a desire to check out LA and, yeah, and other but like, cities, no. but like oh. once you got to Nashville, like this feels right. I kind of realized that if I'm going to network and make some actual connections and friendships, I can't be at every place three or four days. Yeah, I just you spend have a good to, few weeks. Some, you have to you know, dig in your heels. Yeah, and meet so. people several times, and like reconnect with them, and you know, pick up where we left off last time. And not only like, hey, let's have a beer next time I come here, maybe in two years. You know. Yeah. So that made a lot of sense, uh, and that actually during that trip, I met Victor Broda. I met you once, I think, and I became friends with Guthrie Trap. Sure. Who is who, a great guitar player? Oh yes, town. check him out uh, if you don't know about him. And he ended up being uh, the guy who sponsored my work visa, so his oh, name great. is actually printed into my passport, which wow. is kind of cool. He was he one of the up. biggest reasons I was able to move over here. Now, how did you meet Guthrie? Now, he was playing a weekly thing uh, in downtown Nashville uh, at a venue called Acme. Oh yeah, every, every Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. and. Um, I went there a couple of times, or actually went there many times, and I ended up having a couple of lessons with him okay. to kind of pick his brain a little bit. So and you just went up to him and say, hey Guthrie, really like you're playing, Yeah. you want to, could you teach or whatever? Yeah, and well, someone told me that he was giving lessons as well, and I'm like, I want to have a lesson, or just more or less sit down and pick his brain a little bit. I want to have a lesson yeah. with Guthrie too. Everyone should, like, it's it was really good to get to know him and like, uh, he, you know, I even spent Thanksgiving with him the first time I was oh, here. Man, he and some great. other musicians, including Pete Abbott, really good drummer, mm -hmm. and Michael Rhodes, one of the most oh, recorded yeah. bass players exactly. maybe ever, especially in Nashville. Sure. I spent it with them and their families. So kind of, just kind of weird. through that one meeting, yeah. it kind of expanded your whole networking yes. world, yes, which so. is great. Yeah. Now, which is, okay, another good segue, one of the first gigs that you got, one, well, I guess the first touring gig that you yeah. got in the States was with Tracy Lawrence. Exactly. Which was, what year was that? That was uh, last I year? moved here in July of 2017. So, okay, you officially moved to yeah. Nashville. And how soon after you moving here did you get that gig? I got a text um, from Saul Philcox, another great player here in yeah, town. Yeah, great studio. Um, three weeks after I moved here. Hey man, do you want to audition for Tracy Lawrence? And I'm like, who's that? Because country music isn't that big sure. in Sweden. Like he's had 18 number one hits, which is crazy. For anyone that but, doesn't know Tracy Lawrence, he, uh, I guess he got big in the 90s, early, yeah, 90s, yeah, early 90s, and he's kind of um, had his career since then yeah. and doing a lot of uh, uh, touring, yeah, especially three weeks and six weeks. Then after I moved over here, the actual audition took place, and it wow. was me and another six or seven guys. And I'm not sure I was the best player, but I was probably the one who cared the most about that audition and prepared <laughs> the most. I'm like, I'm not going to screw up my first audition here sure. in town. And I got a text the same night like, hey, the gig is yours if you want it. And I'm like, this is like, I didn't even consider the chance of getting the gig. For me, it was just an opportunity to prepare for an audition and yeah, like, which just is learn how the process is. It's great practice and it's yeah. a great experience yeah. to do you know, an, a real audition yeah. too. So that was, that was just crazy. So less than two months... After I moved here, I played my first gig with him who, you know, he's had 18 number one hits and sold 14 million yeah. albums. That's more than we have citizens in my home country, <laughs> which is insane. And I played the Grand Lopry House less than three months after I moved here. That's uh, insane. I mean... How many people does that happen? That's just like... I know. I'm so grateful for all of that. It happened so, happen so quickly. It happened so quickly. It and shouldn't so, be possible, really, but it, well, it happened. In this town, it, it can is, happen. I mean, part you could say part of it is luck. Part of it is just right timing, but yeah. also uh, your talent and your personality is, a, for me, I think pers talent and personality go a long way. Yeah, and work ethics, is, like, exactly. work ethics and like, just like... How you get along with yeah, people. Yes. Yeah. I think that's paramount to like getting a gig, almost more than at, your talent. At, at least keeping the gig. You can keep, get a gig yeah. by being an asshole, by playing really well at the audition, but you yeah. won't keep the gig if you're not a good guy. Exactly right. So, so how long did you uh, tour for with Tracy? I started in September of 2017 and played my last gig about a month ago, so like okay. late January. Okay. Uh, I just played two shows with them this year. Uh, I decided to, to move on to some other stuff. Yeah. I just felt like I don't want to walk in my own footstep doing the same things as last year. When you kind of commit 
you know, to one gig and you see all these, all this other stuff going yeah. on, you kind of want to like, like Fuck, you should know. I have done that? Should I have done that? Like, yeah. I'm, and it's different yeah. for everybody. Like I know guys that have been on the same gig f- since the nineties and yeah. are totally comfortable yeah. with keeping that gig. But if you have four kids and a big house, yeah. maybe that's the most comfortable way to live life then. Yeah. I've taken risks a few times and I've yeah. always landed on my feet and been very happy that I made those choices. So. Yeah. So the new thing that you're working on is with Kyle? Kyle Daniel. Okay. Uh, I met him the very first time I was here as well. And he's like, considering that Tracy has had as many hits as he's had and been active since the early 90s. This guy has, you know, he released his first five song EP in late March last year. So he has not been active as a solo artist for a very long time. But he's been touring as a sideman with many people. Yeah. uh, He's a great guitar player. Yeah, he is. And... uh, fantastic front man and great singer great too. singer so it's you know i've been playing a lot with people both here since i moved uh, and back home in sweden with people who are 20 25 years older than me which has been a you know great learning experience and yeah. i've been able to kind of ride on their career in a way but i also like kind of miss playing with people my own generation and yeah, um, that are into the same things that you're yeah into. and like where we grow something together and we're not like it's all a hot yeah instead of being a hired gun yeah with someone that already has built themselves as an artist exactly you're kind of, uh helping a new artist or uh, someone establish themselves a- exactly and, and like that. and i know i can have an impact on how well this hopefully will go you know yeah. compared to like knowing that if they would replace me with another guitarist next weekend the same people will show, show up exactly at, at the you know at the venue in louisiana or whatever yeah. here i can kind of have more of a effect of how how things go yeah and like and that can help me in my career i'd rather uh regret doing it than regret not doing it yeah you know? you're never gonna know unless you do it exactly so. that's the way or let me know when you play in yeah. town too because i want to check I you will. guys out and i'll put a link in the description yeah. to kyle's stuff yeah all right let's talk about gear because we're guitar players and that's a very important part of our lives of course are there is there any Gear that you've acquired recently that you're really digging? Guitars, pedals? Um, well, like the most recent thing I think that has been like, whoa, this is, you know, it's actually yeah, this one. Yeah, let's check this is out. This, already, Show me. Um, this is a fantastic Strat built by a Swedish luthier called, uh-huh. uh, the company's called Sonnemo Guitars. Okay. That's his last name. Uh, he reached out to me um, just like three weeks after I moved here, before I got the Tracy gig or anything like that. And just like, hey man, looks like it's going really well for you. I I want to build you a strat. And so he offered me a better deal than he's offered anyone else. Yeah. And built me this custom strat that from like beautiful. my not entirely my specs, but kind of what we agreed would be best for me as a really versatile, you know. Yeah. You know, if you bring one guitar on the road, this should be it for me. Right. That was the plan. What pickups yeah. are in these? It's actually his own oh, okay. uh, hand wound. I kind of describe this is the kind of sound and functions, and these are the guitarist whose tone I'm liking. Oh, okay. Uh, That's a good way to do it. Just tell the the builder like, I want it to sound yeah. like this vibe. And especially since he's a really good guitar player, has been a musician for many years himself. He knows that kind of talk yeah. as well. He doesn't only care about the tech talk. Right. So, it's a kind of low output uh, humbucker, which I love. Um, Yes, <laughs> too hot. Like I've already told people that how much I love low output humbuckers. Yeah. and uh, you can actually split it with a push push switch here. Yeah, which I much prefer compared to push pull. I realized <laughs> it's just yeah, kind of easier. Um, and it has the mini toggle switch here to activate the neck pickup. So you can have a sp- uh, that combination. Yes. That what okay. So I can have. I've counted it's like eleven different combinations. Oh my! God. I won't use all of them on every gig, but they're there. But that's if I want cool them. to yeah. have the the outer pickup thing to have like almost like a telly or a exactly type so of thing. if i have uh, the humbucker split and activate that i have these two coils that's great uh but i can have like any combination more or like i can't have this separately yeah. because when it splits it's, it's this one. one yeah yeah but it's other still... than that it's a lot of different tones coming out of this guitar that's awesome. and the cool thing is it's it's very very well balanced. Like if you play into a clean amp with a lot of headroom, you'll notice a volume between the humbuckers, yes. single coils, yeah. And when you split this or put it in full humbucker mode, but if you have a light compressor or a low gain overdrive that I usually keep on just to kind of you know a little, a little bit of edge to break push, up, yeah. Uh, 
then it's almost no difference in, in output. It's like it will compress a little bit more, give you a little bit more fullness sure. and mids, but but it's not like boom, boom. It's it's a flavor change more than it's like a. 78% volume boost. Like, yeah, I don't need that. I, I can have a pedal for that and set that exactly where I need. Yeah, so I it works those. really, really well. And I've um, I played my... Stock too. Yeah, it's it's cool. Uh, from a distance, more or less, just look like a Fender headstock. Right. But when you, the closer you I get, you see more what that's called, that bevel... There's a term for that. Yeah, I can't remember what it's I'll either, it but up. it's cool. Um, Check out the back. Yes. Um, so... This you just mentioned when I yeah. showed you this earlier that you like the the heel the, the, exactly the heel. the heel is kind of contoured. I'm not sure like what angle I should yeah. show, but it gives really good access to the, the higher frets. Yeah. Uh, and I like how big the bolts are. Yeah, it just it's really solid. Yeah, I wish, for sure. You know, uh, and it's like it's been my go-to like 100 percent since yeah. since I got it. I really like the relicking too. Yeah. That's kind of what he even on the knobs and the became covers. famous for. Yeah, I like how these like edges is a little bit like rounded and yeah, and just it looks comfortable. Yeah, and he's like making the knobs, he's making the pick guards himself. You know, everything except for the metal parts, I guess. Yeah, he's doing himself. So it's like really a hand Who signed built. It? It's one of the Swedish uh, hockey players in the National <laughs> Predators. I didn't have anything else to sign, so I was so kind here. of wanting him to sign it a little bit smaller. I didn't realize it would be that uh, big. But is there any uh, gear that you've seen that you want? Um, or interested in checking out? Uh, and I've been looking into getting the... Um, it's not been out very long. It's uh, the Jackson uh, Audio. Which one? Uh, the new one, the, the, the Bloom. Oh, yeah. It has like a compressor, EQ, and Intra a boost in the yeah. same. Sounds I've got the... Uh, really cool to me. The, the Prism. I've got the Prism, yeah. yeah. But the Bloom looks really cool, too. It looks really cool to me. Uh, I don't know if I would, you know... I've had simple compressor pedals. I don't know if some of these, like, you know, the, the Keeley or the Cali 76 with too many parameters would really work out for yeah. me. But this one still has three knobs, but like six different modes with tuned attack and release time. It seems uh, like a pedal, like an always on pedal. Yeah. Which is kind of like the way the, the prism is for me. Yeah. Like I would just keep it on yeah. all the way just to make that, to have that sound yeah. all the time. In typical fashion of the show, I like to do a five question lightning round with my guests are you ready yeah do you have the five written yes out? okay i didn't send these to you so no, you don't know i'm not gonna okay you know, and away you. we go strats or tellies strats vox ac30 or fender deluxe reverb fender Ooh, grand old opry or the grand old opry at the ryman at the ryman oh yeah good choice. Ingve momstein or andreas oberg Ingve, actually, I think. All right. Yeah. I was gonna. I more gonna, is more. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Swedish candy, Bilar or Sir Scumfisk? What's the I'm, I'm, I'm one? totally not no. pronouncing this right. S Sir Scumfisk. Uh, the second one. That's like a sour um, fish, kind of. <laughs> Sir is. <laughs> that sounds sour. awful. We a have a lot of sour candy. In a sour, like. So it's like a, a Swedish fish that we have here, but it's a sour version. Like the Swedish fish is not a Swedish candy. It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. called it's that gross. for some it's like reason. A gummy it's, thing. It's, I, I hate that. Or like, it, it's not good at all. It's like a gum. It's a bad gummy. Yeah, beer. yeah. So, but you said sour fish and you, you know, the, the idea of a sour fish. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's just in it the shape rancid. of a fish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did I say that right? Bilar? Bilar. That means cars. Okay, so it's a little candy shaped like cars. Yes. And then how do you say that? Sour, uh, sour. That's sur scum fisk. That's amazing. I love <laughs> the Swedish language. It's just well, so like, <laughs> it's a peppy. Yeah, well, <laughs> you should hear like people speak in Norwegian where it's quite similar to Sweden, but they sound super happy all the time. Like even Happier? if it's like, yeah, even if it's like, you know, my grandma passed away last week. That my grandma passed away last week. They sound like super, like happy, and like the melody of the language is just like. <laughs> okay, very That's interesting. Amazing. You got David. Thank you so much for being here, thank everyone. You, David Henriksen, check him out. He's got a YouTube channel, correct? Yeah, I've, I've he's got some... more active on Instagram and Facebook, but I should pick it up on on YouTube as well. He's yeah. got YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I'll put his links down in the description below. Uh, we might do a little bit of jamming here uh, for another me. video. Well, we'll, f we'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. 
And if you'd like to see more of these types of videos, gear demos, tone tips and tutorials, click that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.